Hey guys, it's Sarah here. In this video, I'm going to be going over everything that you have to know about the eye for the nurse practitioner board. I'm going to go over the normal, what's normal to see when you're looking in someone's eye, what's abnormal, diseases, what they could indicate, etc. Okay, so here are terms that you just have to know. First one is myopia, which is nearsighted. Hyperopia, I like to remember like hyper, like it's a lot, you know, so it's very far. It's farsightedness. Am ambulopia is lazy eye, and if you look at that word, someone who's lazy, like, just doesn't like to pronounce it. That's just hints that I like to remember it, but you don't have to remember it this way. The next one is strabismus, so cross-eyed. That's actually easy because cross-eyed has two S's, strabismus has a bunch of S's, so that works out. Pitosis is when the upper eyelid droops. Meiosis is pupils constrict, and nystagmus is jerk your eye movement. It's usually from like medication, a lot of psych related, vitamin toxicity, vertigo, etc. So here's a normal eye. So when you're looking into someone's eye, this is what basically you should see. You should see the optic disc, it should be sharp, disc, it should not be enlarged, no swelling. You should be able to see the macula, which is over here, and the fovea is in the middle of the macula. The macula is responsible for central vision. So if someone has macular degeneration, they generally have central vision loss. You should see the arteries should be thinner and lighter than the veins. And what you should be seeing is no hemorrhage, no cotton wools, no swelling, everything normal, you shouldn't see it abnormally. Um, no arteries crossing over veins, you should see the red reflex, etc. Now we're going to be going on to abnormal findings. Number one is papillar edema. As the name says, edema, so think of swelling. So it's swelling of the optic nerve. Causes of this are increased intracranial pressure, so think of stuff that could increase that. Tumor, abscess, bleeding. Next, we go on to disc cupping. You have the optic cup, it has no fibers in it. You have the optic disc, has fibers in it. And when the cup, which has no fibers in it, increases in size, which usually is from like glaucoma, then it takes over the whole disc area. So think about it like a donut. You have a donut, the middle of a donut, and you have the donut. As the middle gets larger and larger and larger, the outside, it doesn't expand with it. It gets, it doesn't get smaller, but you're gonna see less of it. So it's the same thing what happens here. And this is usually in, um, associated with glaucoma, like an increased intracranial pressure. Poorly controlled hypertension is could lead to a lot of abnormal eye findings also. So that's called hypertensive retinopathy. And what you're gonna find with this is a lot of stuff. I'm gonna list them for you. Number one, the retinal arteries are gonna be narrow and the vessel walls are gonna be thick. Number two, AV nicking. And what AV nicking is, it's compression at the spots. So you have arteries are gonna cross the vein and it's gonna be compression there. So it's gonna look like a part of the vein is missing because it's compressed. Number three, you're gonna have is copper wiring, and as the name says, copper, so it looks like metallic-y when you look into it. Another finding you could have is flame sharp hemorrhages. You could have optic nest swelling, cotton wool spots, which is like white dots on the retina. And obviously with all this, what you want to do is treat their hypertension because these are findings associated with poorly controlled hypertension, so you want to manage your hypertension better. The same thing with the diabetes retinopathy. Diabetes could lead to these, could affect the eye. And what you would see on a, like on examination would be the cotton wool spots, so the white little dots on the retina. You would see neovascularization, so neo is new vessels formation, so usually new vessels will form. Usually it's near the optic disc. Microaneurysm, so aneurysm dilation. Hard exudate, so you would see like it would be like yellow. Usually that's from the lipids escaping from the vessels, and you could see retinal hemorrhages. So these are all stuff that are be abnormal findings when you look into someone's eye. Okay, these are danger findings. And what I mean by this is, is that a lot of stuff could be abnormal, and but doesn't mean that you have to send them to the emergency room right away. It doesn't mean that if you don't treat it right now, it could lead to serious complications. So these are danger findings in that it could lead to blindness if not treated right away. It could lead to like all different stuff which we're going to be discussing. So these stuff you absolutely want to know and you want to always rule them out and make sure that you identify this because um, it could cause a lot of complications if not found. Corneal ulcer. So corneal ulcer is basically an open sore in the cornea. Usually that's from infection, 
And it's most con commonly found with people who have contacts, you know, like eye contacts, um, who put them in and out. They're going to come in with symptoms like eye pain, tearing, photophobia, and a, like a foreign body sensation, which means that they feel something in their eye. It's going to be diagnosed with fluorescent, and you're going to see white lesions on the cornea. What you want to do for this, immediate referral to the emergency room because this could lead to scarring, perforation, and even impaired vision. Next, we go on to herpes keratosis. Herpes keratosis is a viral eye infection, and it's usually caused by HSV. It's going to be diagnosed with the fluorescent dye, and they're going to have the same symptoms, eye pain, photophobia, hearing, blurry vision. You always want to refer to that. Next, we go on to acute angle closure glaucoma. So that's a danger find. So let's just discuss glaucoma in general. So glaucoma, what it is, it's an optic nerve damage from increased pressure in the eye. So the pressure is going to, you know, put a lot of pressure and you're going to have a damage to the optic nerve. This leads to patches of vision loss. And there's two types of it. Number one is open angle, which is chronic. Number two is acute, acute angle closure glaucoma. So an open angle, which is not like a part of this danger finding, we're just going to discuss this now, is you have a partial blockage. So pressure builds up, builds up over time, and it leads to peripheral vision loss. And then they're going to have central vision loss, like it's going to keep progressing. You always want to check the intraocular pressure, and if it's more than 30, you want an urgent referral to ophthalmology or the emergency room. But if it's not, and if it's, you know, stable, then you could give them medications like the beta blocker eye drops, the timolol. You could give them lent lentopress, which is like prostaglandin eye drops. Obviously, you don't want to do this for any patient who's like a respiratory patient, like asthma or high failure patient. But that's that. So basically, open angle, which is chronic, gradually, you don't want the intraocular pressure to be that high. If it is, you want to refer them, but otherwise, you can manage them out. What we're talking about now is the second type of glaucoma. So glaucoma member pressure, increased pressure in the eye. So acute angle closure glaucoma. So this happens sudden, and all of a sudden there's a complete blockage of the aqueous humor drainage. So it's not like the like the open angle, which is a partial blockage, so it builds up slowly. It's sudden blockage of the whole thing. So pressure rises really fast, and blindness could occur from that, which is why you want to immediately refer that. They're going to come in with symptoms of sudden severe eye pain, blurry vision, vision loss, headache, halos, nausea, vomiting. When you, when you do the examination, you're going to see that they have mid-dilated, the pupils are mid-dilated and oval-shaped. Corneal is going to be cloudy, and you can even see cupping of the optic nerve. Um, this is going to be diagnosed through tonometry, and you want to, like I just said, immediately refer them to the emergency room because increased pressure could lead to vision loss. Next, we go on to retinal detachment. So retinal detachment is when the retina is pulled away from its normal position. Symptoms they're going to do, like this is the classic symptom that the textbooks ask, is that they're going to feel like a curtain or a shade is in their vision. They also have floaters in their vision, blurry vision, flashy lights. So just one thing, you want to always differentiate. So like if someone says like something that's that different from everything else, like not just your typical eye pain, then you want to remember that. So the, the curtain light, the floaters, etc., is for retinal detachment. What you want to do for this is immediate, immediately refer them to the emergency room. So all these are basically immediate referrals to the emergency room. Orbital cellulitis. Orbital cellulitis is basically an infection involving the content of the orbit. It's usually like a lot of times they'll come in with a history of upper respiratory infection, sinusitis, and this is pretty serious, and they're going to come in with symptoms of eyelid edema, conjunctival congestion, eye pain, and you want to refer them immediately to the emergency room for IV antibiotics. Now, once we're on this topic, I'm also going to discuss preceptal cellulitis. Preceptal cellulitis and orbital cellulitis present the same way. They're going to come in with eyelid edema, so it's going to be swollen right above the whole eyelid, conjunctival congestion, eye pain. So in order to differentiate, because preceptal cellulitis is not an immediate referral to the emergency room, but orbital cellulitis is. So you have to know the difference. So with orbital cellulitis, the difference is that you're going to have, that you could have vision impairment, 
pain with eye movement and proptosis. So those stuff you're not going to have with the preceptal cellulitis. It's not going to hurt them when they open their eyes. It's going to look just as bad, but it's not going to hurt them. And with the preceptal cellulitis, you could give them oral antibiotics while orbital cellulitis, immediate referral for IV antibiotics. Next, we're going to go on to optic neuritis. Optic neuritis, itis, so inflammation of the optic nerve. That's pretty easy. It's usually associated with multiple sclerosis, so it could be like a first symptom of multiple sclerosis, usually around age 30. And symptoms could be blind spot, so they're like they have like good donut in front of them. It's just a blind spot, and they just can't see through that. Eye pain. You want to refer them to the neurologist, immediate or ED, emergency room. So these are all the danger findings. You always want to know the danger findings, and because you don't want to miss them. These are stuff you don't want to miss. Now we're going to go on to regular eye diseases or findings. Okay, so here are other eye conditions that don't necessitate an immediate referral to the emergency room. So blepharitis. That is itis inflammation of the eyelids. So just think where like the eyelashes are, you know? And that what happens is that it's from clogged base, from oil gets clogged, and they're going to have swollen, red, itchy eyes. They can also have like, it looks like a little dandruff, like small scale dandruffs by the base, like where the eyelashes are. Treatment is going to be, you could, you could take the Johnson baby shampoo with warm water, you do topical antibiotic solution, eye drops, and warm, warm compress. You want to always teach them, teach them about good lid hygiene, like good eyelid hygiene, eliminate the triggers if it's from allergens, etc. The next one is presbyopia. Presbyopia is a gradual loss of farsightedness. So farsightedness, remember, it's always the opposite. Farsighted, they can't see near. So it's a gradual loss of farsightedness. It starts around age 40, and honestly, it's a normal part of aging. So there's really not much you could do. Symptoms are going to be they're going to have trouble focusing on things that are up close to them, like a book or something, and they have to hold it at like arm's length. So they have to hold the thing really far to be able to see it. Next, we're going to go on to cataracts. Cataracts is when the lens of the eye clouds. Symptoms are going to have problem with glare. So think about like when they're nighttime driving. They're going to have blurry vision, halos. This is painless. Just remember that because that could be a differential, a big differential. It's painless. You want to refer them to ophthalmology. Most of these stuff referral to ophthalmology, but you always want to make sure to remember the danger signs to know immediate referral to emergency room because they could get an ophthalmology appointment in a month and you don't want to wait for the other stuff. Next one we go on to is corneal abrasion. Corneal abrasion is, just think of an abrasion like a scratch, so it's a scratch on the cornea. Cornea is a clear um, area in front of the eye. Usually causes our fingernail, a tree branch, something like that that's scratched. Symptoms could be they feel something in their eye, so foreign body sensation, um, tearing, eye pain. You always wanna rule out penetrating trauma, so you wanna ask them for a good HMP, and you could flush with sterile normal saline to remove the foreign object. If you can't remove it, you always refer out and give them antibiotic, topical. Okay, next we go on to Sojourn syndrome. So this I put in the eye because it has a lot of eye symptoms. So Sojourn syndrome is actually an autoimmune disorder. And the symptoms are going to be dry eyes, so really dry eyes and mouth, daily for more than three months. And... The treatment is going to be over-the-counter tear substitutes that you can find over-the-counter, usually three times daily, and they should be managed by an ophthalmologist, so refer them to that. Next we go, iritis. Iritis, itis, inflammation, eye of the eye. So it's inflammation of the inside of the eye. And how I like to remember it is it starts with eye, so that's the inside, and itis is inflammation. So inflammation of the inside of the eye. Symptoms are going to be, they're going to be very sensitive to light, a headache covering the eye, so they're going to feel a headache over there. And the whole eye, the whole iris is going to be inflamed. You want to do immediate referral to ophthalmology. Next, we go on to entropion. And the reason why I wrote entropion with a huge N is to differentiate between entropion and ectropion. So entropion is the eyelids are turned inward. So N is for inwards. Eyelids are turned inwards. And what happens over here is that because they're turned inwards, the eyelashes rub against the eye and irritate it. By ectropy, and the eyelids are turned outwards, 
and because they're out, it's exposed, so they cause it to be very dry and it gets irritated. The next one is subconjunctival hemorrhage. And this is hemorrhage, broken blood vessels on the surface of the eye. So that's pretty easy to spot. Causes are from local trauma or stuff that could, um, you know, very straining, coughing, heavy lifting. Usually resolves on its own in one to three weeks, and you want to follow up with them until it's resolved. You know, make sure it's resolved. Next, we go on to, excuse my pronunciation, Aspirus sinetalis. And what this is, is that it's a white, or more like light white or a light gray, ring around the cornea. It does not cause any vision problems. And the reason why I mention this again is because if it does, you want to think of your differentials. So no vision problems and cause from this is cholesterol. It's normal as they age and there's no, no need for any treatment. Then plasma is basically cholesterol, yellow de plaque deposits around the eye. It's commonly found in middle to older age and also caused by high cholesterol. And you always want to do a lipid profile. Okay, so here are two conditions that are quite, that a lot of times they look the same, so I put them, you know, side by side so you could see it. So, hernulum is a sty. We all know what a sty is. It's basically, it's bacterial infection, usually staph. It's right by the eyelashes, by the follicles, and you're, it's going to be tender, swollen. Treatment for that is warm compress around five to ten minutes, two to three times daily until it drains. If the infection spreads, it could lead to preceptal cellulitis, which we already discussed. Next, we go on to compare it to clazione, which is a blocked oil gland. So the difference between this is that a sty is going to be eyelash by the eyelash follicle. So just think about exactly where the eyelashes are. And this is going to be on the eyelid. So it's going to be on top of the eyelash. It's going to be firm and painless. And if it's large, they might need um, incision and drainage, surgical removal, or steroid injection. Okay, now we go on to conjunctivitis. You have bacterial, viral, and allergic. So here we could see the symptoms. Number one, you could see it. Number two, we're going to differentiate it. With bacterial, it's unilateral. With viral, it could begin in one, but could progress to one. So you could go either way. It could have both or one. And allergic is always bilateral. So if it says it's unilateral, you don't want to think of allergic, you want to think of bacterial, but you also want to rule out viral. With bacterial, you're going to see mucal perlian crusty. As you look in the picture, it's like yellow mucus um, drainage. Viral, it's going to be watery and allergic watery. So again, if you have that drainage, automatically think bacterial. Itchiness is very common with allergic, so if someone has um, itchiness, you want to think of allergic conjunctivitis. Redness is going to be with all them, like we see in the picture, and the treatments are going to be a little different. So with bacterial, obviously antibiotics like gentamicin, atobramycin, the drops. Viral is going to be supportive, warm compress. Allergic could be topical antihistamines. So now we go on to differentiate these two conditions. So fingucula is yet yellowish whitish raised like growth in the eye so as you see in this picture it's a perfect picture and it's a little raised and it's like yellowish a little bit whitish and it's caused from sun exposure you want to do for that a referral to ophthalmology good quality sunglasses if it affects the vision it's going to have to be removed surgically the next one is also called surfer's eye and that is a triangle yellow shaped and it's in the growth of the white part of the eye. If you just look at the picture, it's quite different. You can see the difference caused by the same thing, by sun exposure, and the same treated the same way. So that's it for the eye topic on that you have to know for your nurse practitioner boards. If you like any of this in a PDF form, look in the comment section below and please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you for watching.